Right, let's make a start on the hawk. So, first bits to do are the fuselage, the prop and spinner, and uh, the inside of the cockpit. So a little bit of interior green in there, and that's as much as I'm going to bother with because I'm not going to be able to see any sort of like detail in there. So now it's a case of just joining those two halves with a bit of liquid poly. So fuselage and tail planes and rudder and wing assemblies and cockpit are all done, ready to put together. So I've just put, I uh, can't really see, interior green, bit of black, so on in there, and same in there. See it better from that side, there you go. Just picked it out a little bit with dry brushing. Fit is pretty good. There's uh, some slight seams on the top and the bottom of the fuselage. A uh, slight gap at the bottom of the fuselage there as well, which is a bit annoying, so that's going to need to be rubbed down. I suspect it was a bit of unseen flash. Uh, unfortunately, it was set while it was all being held together. But uh, that's not insurmountable. But yeah, um, generally it's looking okay, so that's ready for me to plonk that on there. A bit uh, a bit more precisely than that but first off I've got to wait until it's all dries so then I can just go over here with a bit of emery and tidy up the seam so we've put the fuselage onto the wings I'm not loving it it's a bit untidy here at that front bit but worse than that there's massive gaps here on the wings I don't think that's anything I've done. So I'm going to have to get the filler into those. Now if we just come over here. I bought this the other day. Plastic putty. And that seems to be really good. So we're going to put that in there once the glue has dried. And smooth it off. And then tidy things up with a bit of uh, sanding and uh, scalpeling. But yeah. The, the fit there is absolutely abysmal. So, you know, I mean, I can I can push it, I can squeeze it, I can do whatever, and it doesn't really seem to want to be any better. It all seems quite loose. The Spitfire that I did was really, really tight to put in. But we can get around it, we can work around it, can't we? So there's a thin bead of butty applied. I've now just got to rub that in. There we go, rubbed in, cleaned up, and uh, I'm just going to make sure that I run a scalpel or something similar down the lines, the panel lines that have also got a little bit in. Now, I've been a bit concerned about these very, very flimsy machine gun barrels, and right enough, just knocked two of them off. I mean, they're really thin. They're, they're thinner than a pin. But um, I'll put them to one side. I might take the other ones off now, actually. And then I can just reattach them later on once I'm, uh, once I'm done with the painting. I knew they were going to come off. I'd rather have two holes in the wing and separate gun barrels that I could just poke in right at the end. But uh, that's not the way they do it. Well, I'm happy with all the filling that I've done. So... The holes and gaps are covered. So what I'm going to do now is just slide that. It's nicely uh, nicely made for doing that, actually. So I'm going to slide it in like that. I'm going to give it a quick burst of back black as a primer. I prefer this to the actual primer that I was using. This tends to stick really nicely and give a nice finish. It actually looked amazing on the underside of the Lancaster that I just finished. So, ah, there we go. I'm just gonna cover that a bit more. Always do it in little bursts, rather than a big, thick, massive coating. Well, the black is all cured and dried. I've got it uh, in the spray booth ready to put the first colour on. There we go. Finished uh, spraying the first coat, the uh, brown. 
onto it. Looks good. Looks a nice even coating. So I'm quite pleased with that. That gap on the wings has filled fairly well. So that's good too. What I should have done though was also sprayed the engine cover. Silly me. Never mind. Main problem being that I mixed the colour specifically. Ah. Hey, this all looks like fun, doesn't it? Now we're on to the masking. So, what I do is I photocopy to the correct size the uh, paint guide. Okay, then I cut. So, because I've already done the brown here, what I do is I take the brown bit and I cut just a few mil inside, say five mil or whatever, inside the brown bits. Put masking tape over the top of those and then stick them on so that I get that edge. That will uh, see me airbrushing in the right sort of areas, in the right sort of pattern. It's not going to be exact, but uh, it's not going to be bad. It's going to be close enough for my purposes.